Oh, do you, be a deer. What you want? <laughs> Answering questions, guys have whatever the fuck that video is called. This feels like it's like a, a coming circle, full circle coming through. Coming circle. We can pray before reading the like, calling. Wait, but you need to turn the thing on. It's the like light a, on. It's like a say. Okay, do you want to do it together? Yeah. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I'm so grateful that we're here today and able to read a Colleen Hoover book mm. together, especially this has been your first and this is not my first, uh, but it doesn't matter whose first time it is, it really yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, no, no, it's not about... Um, all that it matters is that I'm your last. Mm -hmm. oh. um, before we go into this, I just want to say I've been tweaking about you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I, I thought about you it was at SOCON. Oh. SOCON, yeah. What's... So Sock on What's my it? balls. Sock on my balls. Thanks. <laughs> Please, God, bless the smut that we are about to read today. Amen. Amen. All right. Today I brought to you my favorite actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Today I brought to you an old friend. Hi. If you don't know, we had a podcast together, which we've actually been talking about a lot recently. I've been really passionate about Colleen Hoover recently because everyone else has been passionate about Colleen Hoover and the type of passion that you might be thinking of is like, oh my god, you love Colleen Hoover, you're a big Colleen Hoover fan. Wrong. No. I'm a big Colleen Hoover hater. Today I went out and I bought not only one, but two Colleen Hoover books. It's of the same book. I was like, who else could I read this with? I don't want to read Smut alone, especially Smut that I've already read before. Who could I read this with except my actor friend. Do you know anything about this book? I know nothing about this book. Okay, good. <laughs> the main character, Fallon, because every single Colleen Hoover book has to have the most insufferable names ever. Sorry if your name is Fallon and you're watching this video. But Fallon is uh, at dinner with, at lunch. It, she's at food with her father at a diner. It is the anniversary of when she got burned in a house fire. Oh, he was burned. No, she was burned. She was burned. Only oh, her. Is she like deformed now? Not oh. that you get deformed. <laughs> she is a burn victim. Like, she's very heavily burned. Oh, damn. Yeah. November 9 oh. is the day that this happened. No way. Yeah. Wow. It's awfully close this to... This is like a book club. It's awfully similar, if you reverse the numbers, to 9-11. So she's at a diner with her father, getting food, and he's a dick. He's mm -hmm. like a casting agent or like some big hotshot man up in... You, you understand because you're an actor. Yeah, you know, because I've met with like a ton of casting agents. Yeah. Like, it's tough. It's just like my whimsy is showing and it's like yeah. whimsically singing on the street. Yeah. Like, like totally minding on my own business. Okay, well don't pull out your whimsy in this I'm not, video. No, no, no. This is very real. We don't know the boy's name yet. Okay, I'm explaining too much. Into okay, I'm getting nervous. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, babe. He says, wrapping his arm around my shoulders. He just called me babe. This random dude just put his arm around me and called me babe. What the hell is going on? I glance at my father, thinking he's in on this somehow, but he's looking at the stranger next to me with even more confusion and whimsy than I probably am. I stiffen beneath the guy's arm when I feel his lips press against the side of my head. Damn LA traffic, he mutters. Random dude just put his lips in my hair. Popcorn Jake. I thought this was his her dad. No, this is not her dad. This is a this is a uh -oh. random guy coming up to her at dinner with her dad or food with her dad at diner with her dad. Oh my god. Oh okay okay. What is going on? The guy reaches across the table for my father's hand. I'm Ben. He says. Benton James Kessler. <laughs> Your daughter. <laughs> no one's named Benton. Your daughter's boyfriend. Your daughter's. Da, da, da. I'm pretty sure my mouth is hanging open, so I immediately clamp it shut. I don't want my father to know I have no idea who this guy is. <laughs> and I also don't want this Benton guy to think my jaw is touching the floor because I like his attention. He releases my father's hand and settles against the booth. He gives me a quick wink and leans towards me, bringing his mouth close enough to my ear to warrant being punched. Just go with it. He's overheard our entire conversation. He must be pretending to be my boyfriend as some weird way to stick it to my father. Huh. I think I like my new fake boyfriend. I didn't think you'd make it. I lean into Ben and look at my father. Babe, you know I've been wanting to meet your father. You hardly ever get to see him. I shoot my new fake boyfriend a satisfied grin for that dig. Shh, shut the fuck up, Clemmy. We're reading smut. This is so important. Ben must have an asshole for a father too because he seems to know just what to say. <laughs> <laughs> 
so now, why would she, why do would that? she do that now she'll never do it again crazy. she's so crazy like that he pinches my chin and looks back at my father and speaking of our girl what do you think of her moving all the way to new york i don't want my ladybug running off to another city but if it means she's following her dreams i'll be the first to make sure she's on her flight ladybug he better be glad he's my fake boyfriend because I feel like punching him in his fake nuts for that cheesy moniker. What the hell? He's like, let me swoop in and save this poor little woman that clearly cannot hold her own. Okay, now we're going from Ben's point of view, okay? I know she isn't shy. I could tell by the way she spoke to her father that she has sass. So I'm a little confused by her silence right now. I swallow my bite of food and take a drink of my soda, maintaining silent eye contact with her the whole time. I wish I could say I'm mentally preparing a brilliant apology, but I'm not. I seem to have a one-track mind, and that track leads straight to the two things I shouldn't even be thinking about right now. Her boobs. <laughs> Her yabos. <laughs> Her yabos. Both of them. <laughs> I know, I I'm pathetic, but if we were just going to sit here and stare at each other, it'd be nice if she were to sh <laughs> if she were sh <laughs> This is the worst book <laughs> I've ever read. <laughs> a woman wrote this book. A, a woman wrote this book. Colleen Hoover. God damn. Where was I? <laughs> oh, right. But if we were just going to sit here and stare at each other, it'd be nice if she were showing a little cleavage instead of wearing this long sleeve shirt that leaves everything to the imagination. It's pushing 80 degrees outside. She should be in something a lot less coven inspired. Sorry. He's like a fashion like reviewer now. <laughs> He's literally like, he's literally like, and now for the critique of your outfit. <laughs> a couple seated a few tables over stands up and begins to walk past us toward the exit. I notice Fallon tilts her head away from them and lets her hair fall in front of her face like a protective shield. I don't even think she realizes she's doing it. It seems like such a natural reaction for her to try and cover up what she sees as flaws. That's probably why she, she's wearing a long sleeve shirt. It shields everyone from seeing what's beneath it. And of course, this thought leads me to her breasts again. <laughs> You're gonna use this against me one day. <laughs> Jake Thatcher canceled. And of course, this thought leads me to her breasts again. Are they scarred too? How much of her body is actually affected? I begin to mentally undress her and not in a sexual way. Very respectful. I'm just curious, really curious, because I can't stop staring at her, and that's not like me. My mother raised me with more tact than this. But what my mother failed to teach me is that there would be girls like this one who would test those manners by merely existing. Don't you think he's kind of like fetishizing her scars already? Like, like already by the start of- Oh no, did you just spoil the end of the book for me? No. Oh. But it's it's very evident by like the next- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, great. Okay. Um, yeah. Who am I going to popcorn to? Popcorn Nicole. So tell me something, she says, leaning forward. Why do you think I needed you to come to my rescue with that fake boyfriend crap? And there it is. She's upset with me. I kind of thought she might be. I didn't think you needed rescuing. I just sometimes find it difficult to control my indignation. That's how I pronounce it. Sorry, English is my first language. She raises an eyebrow. You're definitely a writer because who the hell talks like that? I hope to God that he is not watching this video and he's probably not, but I knew a guy who was a writer Oh, the, the, oh. The guy, he would like send me his poetry about other girls in the middle of the night like we never had a thing for each other ever ever like we were just friends but he would send me like texts that were so long that you had to click see more and they were poems about like other girls eyes and i would have to be like i don't know how to nicely tell you i really don't care and don't ever do this ever again did you read them no! Her eyes shift to my hair. Believe me, that's obvious. No gay man I know would have left the house looking like you do right now. It's like a very common thing in Colleen Hoover books that she... She's homophobic? Well, first of all, he looks bad. That's what she was trying to say. Huh. He looks bad. She also has no, like, representation in her books at all. You think I'm pretending to flirt with you to make you feel better about yourself? Aren't you? Does she really think that? Do people really not flirt with her? Is it because of her scars or because... Clementine! Now she'll never do, never it, again. do it again. You want to know what I thought when I first saw you for the first time? She tilts her head. When you saw me for the first time, you mean as in one whole hour ago? I ignore her cynicism and continue. The first time you walked past me before I interrupted your lunch date with your father, I stared at your ass the whole time you were stomping away. And I couldn't help but wonder what kind of panties you had on. I hate you for talking to me on this one. Yeah, I, hate you. I couldn't help but wonder what kind of panties you had on. <laughs>
Well, gosh, I couldn't help but wonder what kind of panties you had on. I don't know. What kind of panties does she have on? Oh, no, it gets worse. It gets so much worse. That's all I thought about the entire time you were in the restroom. Were you a, th- were you a thong girl? Were you going commando? Because I didn't see an outline in your jeans that hinted you were wearing normal panties. Before you returned from, returned from the bathroom, I started to get this panicked feeling in my stomach. because what if she is going commando? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No! <laughs> no, that's no, not, not, in, not in jeans. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I wanted to see your face. What the heck? Oh, my gosh. She quickly glances down at her lap, but I continue talking. When you walked out of the bathroom, the first thing I noticed was your hair. It reminded me of the first girl I ever kissed. Her name was Abitha. She had great hair, and it always smelled like coconut, so it made me wonder if your hair smelled like coconut. And then it made me wonder if you kissed like Abitha, because even though she was my first kiss, it's still one of the only ones I can remember every detail of. You were almost my booth at this point, and that's when my eyes fell to your cheek, to your neck. I saw the scars for the first time, and just as I noticed them, you darted your eyes to the floor and let your hair cover most of your face. You know what I thought in that moment, Fallon? This bitch is commando. I was so relieved, I tell her, because I could tell with that one simple movement that you're really insecure. And I realized, since you obviously had no idea how fucking beautiful you were, that I just might actually have a chance with you. And so I smiled. Popcorn Jake. Because I was hoping if I played my cards right, I might get to... I hate you. This is literally... I just want everyone to know this is the last line to be read in this section, and she popcorned me. Because I was hoping if I played my cards right... I might get to find out exactly what kind of panties you were wearing under those jeans. Okay, and this is from Fallon's point of view. Jimmy Fallon. We make our way across the living room, and Amber's eyes never leave Ben the entire time. Hi. She finally says, still staring at him. Who are you? She looks at me and points to Ben. Who is he? Ben steps forward and reaches out his hand. Benton Kessler, <laughs> he says. He has the stupidest name. He definitely talks like that. He's like, I, I am Benton Kessler. He reaches over and shakes Glenn's n- hand next. Just call me Ben, though. <laughs> that does kind of sound like John Mulaney. His arm drapes over my shoulders again. I'm Fallon's... Sorry. I'm Fallon's boyfriend. <laughs> boyfriend? He asks, <laughs> moving his attention back to me. Does he mo- know you're moving to New York? I nod. He's known since the second we met. Is that Jimmy Fallon? <laughs> no, that's, 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 that, oh yeah, it is Jimmy Fallon, sorry. Yes. He's known since the second we met. Amber arches an eyebrow. Oh, which, <laughs> she's, she said we're cool. <laughs> which was, when? <clears throat> oh man, says Ben, looking down at me. How long has it been now, babe? One, two hours? Two at most. At the most. We'll be in my room. <laughs> I say casually. Ben gives them a quick wave and then removes his arm from around my shoulders, sliding his fingers through mine. Nice to meet you both. I'm going to follow Fallon to her room now so I can see what kind of panties she has on. I don't need to tell you anything. What this is, is this just now? This is just them in their closet. In her closet. It's not their right, closet. It's her there? closet. They went into her bedroom. How would they get into her closet? Is it a walk-in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it's called? Is that a walk-in? <laughs> Sits through my clothes in the back of my closet. Too long, he says, as he scoots hangers over one by one. Too ugly. Too casual. Too dressy. They're, they're picking out a date outfit. He's picking out a date outfit. He is. He He's is. gay. <laughs> He's so gay. He can't stop talking about our outfits. Are you serious? <laughs> too long. Too ugly. Uh, too casual. Too dressy. <laughs> You've said that to me before. I literally have. <laughs> he finally stops and pulls something off the rod. He turns around and holds up a black dress I've been meaning to throw away since the day my mother bought it for me. She's always buying me clothes and hopes I'll actually wear them. Clothes that don't cover up my scars. I shake my head and grab the dress from him, hanging it back in its spot. I grab one of the few long sleeve dresses I own and pull it off the hanger. I like this one. That's me every single time I go home and see my grandma because she can't see my tattoos because she will actually have an aneurysm. He's her manic pixie dream girl. He is. (laughs) His eyes fall to the dress he initially picked out and he pulls it off the hanger and shoves it at me. But I want you to wear this one. I shove the dress back in. I don't want to wear that. I want to wear this. No, he says. I'm paying for dinner, so I get to choose what to stare at while we eat. Then I'll pay for dinner. 
and wear the dress I want to wear. Then I'll stand you up and go to Chipotle. But she has no idea how uncomfortable it is to be in my skin. So please don't ask me again to wear that dress because I'm much more relaxed in clothes that don't show off too much skin. I don't like making people uncomfortable. And if I wore something like that, they would feel weird looking at me. Why can't he just let her wear what she wants to wear? Do you want to read it? You can have this copy. I'm not going to read this book. We're thinking about um, sprinkling <laughs> these books across Philadelphia like people do with their ashes in like the... <laughs> <laughs> in, like the Pacific Ocean. I think without like maybe tearing off some pages, like we'll leave one at the Liberty Bell. We'll leave one in like Rittenhouse. We'll leave one in like. We'll leave the one in the Liberty Bell. Do you know how it ends? He's gay. <laughs> <laughs> What's your prediction to the ending of this book? Okay. Oh, that's a really good. Ooh, I like. Yeah, this yeah, book. yeah, yeah. Okay. Ooh, 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 okay. Ooh, ooh, Based ooh. off of the ooh. the day and everything, <laughs> what's your prediction for the end of this book? Okay, my prediction is he has a house fire and becomes unrecognizable and then like years later they meet and she didn't know about the house fire and then they fall back in love because they have like a shared experience that's actually crazy did you read this before are you lying to me that's that, like exactly no how you're literally lying ends. let's get back to the no point. you're like you're lying okay he simply says dropping the dress to the floor finally but it's your own fault people feel uncomfortable looking at you. I don't even hide my gasp. It's the first thing he says to me all day that's made me feel like I've been spoken to by my father. I'm not going to lie. It hurts. My throat feels like it's swelling shut, so I clear it. That wasn't very nice. I say quietly. I'm shocked. <laughs> I know. I'm so, this Keep man is brazen. This is the romance. The romance, the romance section. Novel, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. They end up in a relationship or something. Yeah. My closet is small enough as it is. I certainly don't need him standing even closer, especially after saying something as hurtful as he just did. It's the truth, he says. I exhale a calming breath, but it catches when his fingers brush the hair in front of my face. The unexpected physical contact forces me to squeeze my eyes shut even harder. I feel so stupid for not forcing him to leave or in the least pushing him out of the closet. But for some reason, I can't seem to move or speak or breathe for that matter. He pushes the hair away from my forehead, running his fingers through it until it's no longer hanging in my face. You wear your hair like you do because you don't want people to see too much of you. You wear long sleeves and collared shirts because you think it helps. But it doesn't. Oh my god! I got a dick. <clears throat> John Mulaney. What the I don't, I don't like him. People don't feel uncomfortable when they look at you because of your scars, Fallon. They're uncomfortable because you make people feel like looking at you is wrong. I feel his fingertips graze my jaw and I flinch. You have the most incredible bone structure. <laughs> I know that's a weird compliment, but it's true. His fingers leave my jaw and try to let my chin until he's touching my mouth. And your lips. Men stare at them because they want to know what they taste like. <laughs> and women stare at them out of jealousy because if they had lips the color of yours, they'd never have to buy lipstick again. I release what might be a cross between a laugh and a cry, but I still don't dare look at him. I'm stiff as a board, wondering where he's going to touch me next, what he's going to say next. <laughs> Olivia Munn has here every she's night before like, she goes She's to like, bed. touch me. And he's like, where would you want to be touched? <laughs> <laughs> I've only met one other girl in my life with hair as long as and beautiful as yours. But I've already told you about Abitha. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Ew. <laughs> He's so hung up on his ex. I feel his hands come up and push my hair behind my shoulders. He's close enough that I know he can see the exaggerated rise and fall of my chest. But my God, <laughs> it suddenly... It suddenly got really hard to breathe and like I'm 10,000 feet higher above the sea level than I was five minutes ago. Fallon says, commanding my attention, his fingers meet my chin and he tilts my face upward. When I open my eyes, he's a lot closer than I thought he was. He's looking down at me with a pointed stare. People want to stare at you. Believe me, I'm one of them. But when everything about you screams, look away, then that's exactly what people are going to do. The only person who gives a shit about the scars on your face is you. <gasps> he lifts his hand and fingers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he lifts his hand and fingers the top button on my shirt. Popping it open, I suck in a quick breath. His eyes never leave my shirt and mine never leave his face. When he moves his fingers down the second button, I could swear he pulls in my, a shaky breath. I don't know what he's doing. And I'm terrified he's about to be the first person to see what's beneath this shirt. But for the life of me, I can't find words to stop so him. So he just, like, verbally berated her, <laughs> made her feel like shit, and he's like... And now I was taking advantage of that. Let me take your clothes Yeah, off. he's like, and you're ugly. Now, about those panties. <laughs> Drop them. <laughs> Our eyes remain locked until he gets to the last and final button. When it's loose, I look down at my shirt. 
popcorn Nikki. Only a sliver of skin is showing over my belly button, so I don't actually feel exposed yet, but I'm about to because he slowly lifts both of his hands to the top of my shirt. Before he makes his next move, I squeeze my eyes shut again. I don't want to see the look on his face when he sees just how much of my body was burned, most of my entire left side to be exact. What he sees when he looks at my cheek is only a fraction compared to what's beneath my clothes. I feel my shirt being pulled <laughs> open. And the more of me that becomes exposed, the harder it is to hold back tears. It's the worst time in the world for me to get emotional, but I guess tears are known for their impeccable timing. His breaths are extremely audible, and so is the gasp I hear him suck in as soon as my shirt is open all the way. I have that if that would ever happen, if someone just went, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> my my, those yabos. <laughs> <laughs> his fingers begin to rise up my hands and wrists just as the first tears fall down my cheek that's insane that's insane that's fucking insane that's insane he's like caressing her as she's fucking sobbing Falling. that's not this is not normal this is not they, fucking normal have, it's not like it's not like they've been like dating for like years or right something. right like, right and she's like i just feel so ugly. right it's like, not it's she's not literally like i'm hideous and right he's like, Stop. You're crazy, babe. You're crazy. Drop them. Let me see them yeah, panties. Let me see those panties. Let me see them scars in those panties. He's not even looking at her body. He's looking at her clothes. No, yeah. He's like, he's like, oh, you're wearing that under this? It's like, polyester. Polyester. Yeah, literally. <laughs> the fuck? The tear doesn't phase him, though. My stomach clenches when his hands meet the top of my jeans. This is going too far. Too far, too far, too far. But all I can do is suck in a wild breath to let his fingers pop open the button on my jeans because as much as I wish he would stop, I get the feeling he's not undressing me for pleasure. I'm not sure what he's doing, but I'm too immobile to ask. Breathe, Fallon, breathe. Your lungs need new air. This is not normal. Like This, this is, is really bad. This is really, really, this, really this bad. And then begins to slowly lower himself. Oh, are you bored? No, my dad's texting me. Where, where, where are you? <laughs> yeah, dad, I'm reading small. Leave me alone. Is that if it's taking every last ounce of his restraint not to remove my last two items of clothing? He clears his throat. Please lift your arms, Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Popcorn Jake. Oh, for the end. Yeah. No, I don't want to do this Ew. part. Why? Ew. Why? Because I don't want to. Because I know what's happening. <laughs> I lift them. And he raises the dress over my head. He takes a step back and eyes me up and down. He clears his throat, but. His voice still comes out raspy when he speaks. Fucking beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> he says with a slow grin. And red. Red. I look down at the dress, but it's definitely black. Your panties, <laughs> he says as clarification. <laughs> They're red. I'm a, I'm a Benton apologist. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Did that hurt? Okay, so I don't know where we are right now. They're just basically like cuddling in her bed and they're, they're just basically like cuddling. <laughs> they're cuddling in her bed and they're supposed to go to dinner soon. Okay. Do they have sex? No. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they're cuddling. They haven't even kissed yet. <gasps> she laughs and scoots down on the bed so that she's facing me. Her expression is soft with a trace of a smile. She reaches a hand out and presses her palm against my neck. My breath hitches. <laughs> if I asked for your phone number, would you give it to me? No. <laughs> she pulls her hand from my face and rests it on the bed between us. We're only eight. We're only eighteen. They're eighteen. Oh my god! Just like two hours ago. I thought she was like twenty-seven. I don't enjoy that. She's writing about eighteen-year-olds in this light. We're only eighteen, and I'm I'm moving to New York. We barely know each other, and I promised my mother I wouldn't fall in love with anybody until I'm twenty-three. Agree, agree, agree. And uh, what? Why 23? My mother says the majority of people have their lives figured out by the age of 23. That is so false. That is so I, wrong. I, I wish, I wish I had my life figured out at 23. I touch her <laughs> face just like she was touching mine. I can feel her flinch beneath my palm because I'm touching the part of her she didn't even want me looking at a few hours ago. I run my thumb over her jaw and then slide my hand down the length of her neck. She's very tense everywhere beneath my touch. Does this bother you? Her eyes flicker back and forth between mine. I don't know, she whispers. I wonder if I'm the only one who has ever touched her scars before. Oh. I've had accidents in the past where I've burned myself at tempting to cook so I know what it feels like when a burn heals. That's really fucking bold to say that comparing her scars from a house fire to being like, yeah, I burned myself, I like cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the way it feels beneath my fingertips that makes me want to keep touching her. She allows it. Even though she just said, I don't know if it bothers her, but he kept doing it. He's like, ah, I'm going to keep doing it. She allows it. Her eyes moisten as if she's on the verge of tears. It makes me wonder if she doesn't like it. I can understand. It makes you wonder. I know. Oh, I'm like, hmm. I wonder, I wonder if I'm upsetting her in some way. 
What could it be? Hmm. What if I ask her about her panties one more time? <laughs> I wonder if I'm making her uncomfortable. I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> We're almost to the living room and he stops and spins me around. Once again, he looks like he's about to be sick. I stand still and wait for whatever it is he's about to say. It may not be book worthy, but it'll have to do. He takes two quick steps towards me until his hands are in my hair and his mouth is on mine. I gasp in surprise. <gasps> he backs me against the wall and his hands and chest and lips are pressed hungrily against mine. He's gripping my face like he's afraid to let go and I'm fighting for breath because it's so long since I've kissed anyone I think I may have forgotten how to do it right. He pulls away long enough for me to inhale and then he's back and hands and legs and tongue. Oh my god, his tongue! It's been over two years since someone else's tongue has been inside my mouth so I would assume I'd be a little bit more hesitant than I am. But the second he slides it against my lips I immediately part them and welcome the warmth of a much deeper kiss. Soft mesmerizing his mouth coupled with the way his oh my god oh my god she's writing about 18 year olds but the thing is if you read any of her other books she writes about teenagers like this, this too is weird. i know his mouth coupled with the way his hand is sliding down my arm is all too much so much good much so good i just whispered good much. i just whimpered good much <laughs> now she's getting scientific on us i know sex releases endorphins and endorphins keep people awake so having sex with ben might actually benefit me before my flight i haven't had sex in all my 18 years put together so imagine how many endorphins i have built up in here we could have sex before my flight and i wouldn't need to sleep for days imagine how productive i would be when i get to new york really willing to have sex with someone i'll never see again I'm crazy. I can't have sex with him. I don't I don't even own a condom. Now I'm pushing him back down the hall away from my bedroom. Jesus, he must think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dizzy. I'm so dizzy. It feels so good. My mother is crazy. <laughs> Why are you <laughs> to go with your mom? mom? Why would a girl care to find herself when she'll never be able to make herself feel as good as a guy can? What does that even mean? Why would she need to wait until she's 23 when she can just like have someone hot and sexy right now at 18? Like she doesn't need to find herself. She just like can get dick down now. And like her, her mom is crazy. For, for telling her to wait. For, wait. for telling her to wait to get dick down. Wow. Yeah. Hey, you survived a fire. You can survive anything. Does she say that? No. Oh, you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it. Ben is making me feel really good things right now. <laughs> No really good things right now. <laughs> he groans and I freaking lose it. My hands are in his hair and his mouth is all over my neck. Grab my boob, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> he totally reads my mind and grabs my boob. Grab the other one. <laughs> Grab the other one. God, he's so telepathic. We don't need anything that you didn't highlight in this book. <laughs> like I feel like I feel like I have all the information I need. You right. really hit the major plot points. Right. Yeah. Like Unless you wait. No, I'm very excited because Are like Are you actually? Yeah, no, this is a great book. I love it. I can't wait to read this poem. Her tears and my soul, they live parallel lives. Run, ache, burn, repeat. Her tears and my soul, they live parallel lives. You should do that as your next monologue. That was beautiful. Um, but the fact that he wrote burn in there is so I weird. I know! <laughs> burn. He's like, burn! They decide that they're not going to exchange phone numbers. They're not going to exchange fax numbers. They're not going to exchange email addresses. They're just going to meet every november 9th until they're 23 years old and can be in a relationship together this book takes place on every november 9th until they are 23 years old they can only see each other and communicate on november 9th that's why this book is called november 9 not even november 9th november 9 honestly an interesting concept i like it we should start seeing each other only, <laughs> only one day every year. I wasn't expecting this when he said to meet him at his house. I was more or less expecting an apartment, but this is a fairly modern two-story house, a house house. He closes the front door behind me and heads for the stairs. I trail behind him. You didn't bring luggage, he asks. I don't want to think about how little time I'll actually be here. I'm heading back tonight. He stops mid-step and faces me. Tonight? You aren't even staying the night in California? I shake my head. I can't. I have to be back in New York by 8 in the morning. My flight is at 10.30 tonight. His eyebrows draw apart and his mouth tightens. I don't like that for you. <laughs> That's something that you would say to me. Oh, I don't, I don't like, like that, that for you. You. <laughs> you should have called. We could have changed the date or something. I don't know your phone number. Besides, that would have ruined the entire premise of your book. Oh, he's writing a book about them. He's writing a book about her. He's writing a book about because he's a writer. So he's writing a book about their whole like is this November 9th. I let out a moan. <laughs> 
<laughs> this female attraction to the alpha male throws me off a little bit because I'm not anything like the guys you read about. Yeah, you're better. I could never drive a motorcycle or fight another man just for fun. As much as I'd fantasize about having sex with you this year, I don't think I could ever say I own you with a straight face. But you obviously like bad boys if you like reading about them. I enjoy reading books like that because it's not at all the life I lead. It's completely different than any situation I'll ever be in. But thank God. <laughs> but I get entertainment out of it because as much as I like to read about a guy telling a girl she's so, so, <laughs> What for him? If anyone ever said that to me during sex, I wouldn't be turned on by it. I would be terrified. I would be terrified I accidentally peed on myself. <laughs> That's the same energy as Ben Shapiro being like, my wife doesn't get wet. <laughs> That's weird. My wife does not get wet. Ben. Ben. Ben! <laughs> Benton Shapiro. That's who he is. That's who he is. And if you and I were having sex and you told me you owned me, I would literally crawl out from under you, put my clothes back on, and walk out of your house and go puke in your front yard. So just because I like reading about those kinds of guys doesn't mean I need my, my real life guys to act like that. Popcorn Nicole. Okay, see? Okay. Like, like, good luck. Shh. He whispers, thumbing the tears on my cheek. Why is she always crying when they meet? Like, and why is he always thumbing her face? And I'm pissed off at myself for being so self-centered these last few years. Sure, the fire sucked. Yes, I wish it never happened. But it did, and I can't change it, so I need to get over it. I feel like Colleen Hoover should not be writing from a perspective that she has never had to experience. <laughs> because has she talked to a single burn victim that had like, their opinion <laughs> on the matter is like, yeah, it sucked but I need to get over it. Yeah. I take in a deep breath and I throw my arms around him, burying my head in the crevice of his neck and shoulder. Thank you, I whisper. You asshole. Fallon, I'm worked up so damn tight. I'm gonna kiss you right now and I'm not sorry. His tongue slides against mine and there's so much fucking feeling in it. It's as if he's kissing me the same way he looks at me from the inside out. Ew. His mouth has returned to mine and he's kissing me again as his hand slowly begins to crawl inside my shirt, just feeling my yabos. I'm taking off your shirt, he says. I don't even hesitate. I don't even hesitate. His eyes fall to my breast, covered with a black lace bra that I was convinced he wouldn't see tonight. <gasps> he smiles, a devilish smile, running his fingertips over the lace. He Ew, cups my- like, he's like- <laughs> 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 That's literally him. She's crying, he's like, <laughs> Back to the sex. He smiles a devilish <laughs> smile, running his fingertips over the lace. He cups my right yabo in his hand, <laughs> dragging his thumb over the fabric covering my nipple. The second he does that, I flinch because I've read enough books to know that what the next move is, is he's going to be touching me beneath the fabric. My entire body tenses because I don't think I want him to remove my bra. I don't want him to see all of me. No one has ever seen all of me. Baby, he's just sliding his lips across my chest. Relax, okay. That, that's only what a fucking creepy fucking brain. <laughs> Relax, okay. <laughs> baby. Relax. I could try, but now I'm tense because he called me baby and not because he's about to go where no one has gone before. <laughs> <laughs> I've always found that term of endearment. One step for man, <laughs> one giant leap into this woman's pussy. <laughs> Going where no man has gone before. Popcorn Jake. Oh, thank you. He wants me to look at him, but I'm much more comfortable with my eyes closed. Open your eyes, Fallon. <laughs> I slowly bring my gaze down until I'm looking at him in the eyes. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> Every inch of you is so beautiful. <laughs> he grins up at me. <laughs> Are you okay? Can I keep going? <laughs> my first inclination is to shake my head because I shouldn't want him to. Anytime I've imagined this happening with a guy in the past, I pictured myself with a perfect body and no scars, but here I am, staring down at Ben as he explores every part of me I wish were different. And he's actually enjoying it. And mm, so am I. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to slow myself down when I'm with you. But not only does he slow himself down, he stops completely because the door to his bedroom swings open. Ben lies on top of me in a flash covering me, but he isn't fast enough for me to miss the girl standing in the doorway wide-eyed. Oh god, the door. A girl. Can we have a minute, Jordan? Okay, Jordan well. is his brother's wife and or girlfriend, but partner, significant other, and she's with child because everyone's always pregnant in a colleen hoover book like there's so much pregnancy in colleen you hoover. shouldn't be reading these i know you I really, really should not yeah these. oh my god if people like this, is that the one with the pink cover no it's a blue cover it's ugly love oh if people like this and want us to read more i cannot wait to give you ugly love because long story short Colleen Hoover, specifically the book Ugly Love, reminds me of Mr. B specifically because when we went to go to North Carolina for a Mr. B challenge and we were 
quarantine inside. That was one of the books I read, and then we're in the circle, trapped. As, as if as if the Mr. Beast circle wasn't horrible <laughs> enough. Nicole turns to me, she's like, "What if I told you all about this book I'm reading?" And I was like, mm, <laughs> "Jay goes, I'm done. I would rather die. I would rather die." Tattoo. This is the third November 9th. She loved me in quotations. She kissed me in bold. I try to keep her in all caps. She left with an ellipses. Ew, that's so Rupee Carr. I know. Where are you? I utter the dreaded question, knowing he's about to give me an answer that's almost 3,000 miles from New York. Los Angeles, he says. I close my eyes and wait for more words to come, but they don't. He fails to follow it up with any other type of explanation, which only means he feels guilty. He's met someone. Oh, I say. Okay. I try not to be transparent, but my sadness is audible. I'm really sorry, he says. I hear the truth in his words, but it does little to comfort me. Is everything okay? He doesn't answer my question immediately. The silence grows thick between us until he sucks in a rush of air. <gasps> Fallon, he says, his voice faltering on my name. I don't even know how to say this gently, but my brother, Kyle, he, uh was in a wreck two days ago. Why does he have to say gently? Why does he have to say gently? That's his fucking brother. Anyway, I cover my mouth with my hand as his words rush through me. Oh no, Ben, is he okay? More silence, and then a week. No. The words spoken so quietly, it's as if he's in a state of disbelief. He, um, he didn't make it, Fallon. I'm unable to respond to that sentence. I don't know what to say. I have absolutely no useful words. I don't know Ben well enough to know how to console him over the phone, and I didn't know Kyle well enough to express my sadness over his death. Ben's brother died. Wow. Jordan, Jordan, <laughs> wow. the, the, the woman with child, her husband, her husband is dead. Wow, that's yeah, sad. Yeah, so she flies that same day. It was his turn to come to New York, and he didn't make it because his brother just died. That's pretty convenient. Right, I know, he probably killed his brother for all we know. Huh? He killed his brother so that he wouldn't have to go to New York City. So it's his turn to go. So she goes out and flies to see him to console him. To be honest, your version of this book is a lot better than it probably will be, right? Because he didn't kill his brother. Yeah, no, Damn. no. I'd like to have my shirt back now. Now, he nods. Right now, before you turn off the lamp, take it off. It's mine. I laugh nervously and begin to reach for a lamp. Before I'm able to turn the lights off, he jumps up and walks across the mattress, hopping to the floor directly in front of me. His eyes are playful, yet somehow stern at the same time. He grabs the hem of my shirt and pulls it up without hesitation, yanking it off my head. He throws it somewhere behind him, and I'm immobile in front of him, completely exposed. I don't like that. I don't like that, like, her version of, like, standing, this, like, intimate really moment. <laughs> Like, get over here. <laughs> get over here. His eyes read every curve of my body before he lets out a shaky breath. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> His fedora's on, like, <laughs> tightly. <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> what if hmm, we engaged in sexual relations? Orange. And she's like, what? It's like, your panties. <laughs> I think it's time to fornicate now. <laughs> His lips are moist and he kisses me with entitlement. What does that even mean? I don't like that. Have you ever been kissed with entitlement? <laughs> uh, yes, by a white man. His tongue is rough and unapologetic and I love it. <laughs> I love feeling needed in this in this way. I realize as his fingers are slowly trailing down my spine, angst doesn't have to be a factor for a kiss to be a 10 after all. Because angst is nowhere in this kiss. It's already a 9. What? I think it's a 9 out of 10. I guess. That's confusing. He pulls me flush against him. My naked chest pressed against his. Okay. <laughs> it's a 10 now. Okay. Okay. I think... It's a 10. <laughs> I don't even care that the lamp is still on. If it means he'll be looking at me again like he looked at me before this kiss, I'll let him turn on all the lamps. I'd even let him install fluorescence. <laughs> That's the one, like, funny thing that Colleen Hoover That's, has written. Yeah, I like that a lot. Oh, I'll, let him, I'll let him install fluorescence. Fallon, he says quickly, tearing his mouth from mine. I open my eyes, finding him looking down at me. We read the same books. You know the rules. If you want me to stop or slow down, just... Oh, so now... Now, now comes consent. He had, he had to read romance, romance books, books. For him to be like, oh, you're supposed to stop oh, when she's right. crying. Oh, right. Consent. Oh, I forgot to ask. Yeah. Oh, damn. So if you... Okay, so like just for the future, like if you, <laughs> if you want me to stop, let me know. I shake my head. It's 
perfect, Ben. So perfect. I'll tell you if there's something I don't want to do or if I get nervous. I promise. He nods, but it still seems as though there's something else he wants to say or ask. And then I remember that we've never really had this discussion. I've never done this, but that doesn't mean I'm not ready, I tell him. I feel his body stiffen just slightly. I love it when folks say that. Because all I can imagine is just like... I feel his body stiffen just slightly. You're a virgin? <laughs> he says it more of a realization than a question. No, no, I think it's... Oh, you're, you're a, a virgin. virgin. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but only for a few more minutes. <laughs> I thought they had sex the last time. No. The last time I'm... <laughs> Upset. Um, I think we should fornicate. <laughs> my, com my comment forces him to... Sm my comment forces him to smile, but then we're... My comment forces him to smile... Popcorn Nikki. Are, <laughs> are you that nervous for Fallon to lose her virginity? You're like, like damn. My comment forces him to smile, but then worry consumes his expression. His eyes grow immediately sober, and his smile falls into a grim line. He shakes his head softly. I don't want to be your first Fallon. I want to be your last. Oh, what? <laughs> That's why I said that to you when we when we when we said Grace. But it doesn't it matter whose first time it is. It really yeah, doesn't matter. No, no, no. All that it matters is that, that I'm your last. last. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be your first Colleen Hoover book. I want to be your last. You shouldn't be quoting the book. I take in a quiet rush of air as his words sink in. I touch his cheek with the tips of my fingers and smile up at him. I want you to be my first and last. Ben's eyes darken and then he slides his body over mine, caging me in with his arms. I can feel him hard against me and I try not to whimper. You can't say things like that unless you mean them, Fallon. I meant it with everything I am. For the first time, I realized that I don't care about the five years. I don't care about what, that I'm not 23. All I care about is Ben. Once again, she's thinking about her mom while she's about to have sex. <laughs> know, yeah. All I care about is Ben and how I feel when I'm with him and how I want so much more of this. I want you to be my only. I say my voice quieter, but with more resolve. He winces as if he's in pain, but I know by now that's a good thing, a very good thing. He brushes his thumb over my lip. I want to be your only Fallon. I want him more than anything, but it's not happening tonight unless you promise me that I'll be able to hear your voice tomorrow and every day that follows. I nod, surprised we're having this conversation. I wasn't anticipating this at all when I got on the flight this morning, but I know it's right. I'm never going to meet anyone who makes me feel the way he does. I promise. I'm serious, he says. I want your phone number before you leave in the morning. I nod again. They don't have each other's phone numbers? No! How do they find each other every year? I don't know. They talk about it the year before. Okay. They're like, oh, diner next year. I nod again. You can have it. I want you to have it. And my email address. Baby, he says his lips forming a smile. You have already made this the best sex I've ever had. I know not even inside you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Baby. You've you know, already made this the best sex ever. And I'm not even inside, inside you yet. <laughs> Popcorn Jake. I know. Oh, this is horrible. I know, but we have to say to her. This is so bad. Mm -hmm. Definitely dreaming. Definitely. Definitely dreaming. Definitely. <laughs> definitely dreaming, he mutters. Seconds turn into minutes. Fingers turn into hands. Teasing turns into torture. Torture turns into unimaginable pleasure. His boxers have met their fate on the floor. In an insurmountable display of willpower, he's pressed against me, but still not inside me. Fallon, he whispers, moving his lips slowly across my Thank you for this beautiful <laughs> gift. Ew. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My whole body tenses from the burst of pain that ripples through me as he pushes inside of me. But Wait, she's in pain? Yeah, but she's in pain. Uh, for the first time, maybe. I don't know. Why are you telling me? Well, you've never had sex before. No, but like... Yeah, so I'm telling you, like, I, I feel know, like... I've guess. never had sex before either. No. Why are you telling me? <laughs> okay, sex expert. My God. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. You fuck. No. <laughs> Everything that this man does to her is bad. She's crying. <laughs> she's, touching her. she's crying. She's like, ow! <laughs> he, he touches her. She's in pain. Like, yeah. no matter what this man does, it doesn't seem like it's any fun for her ever. <laughs> like, she's always crying and in fucking pain. It's beautiful. <laughs> He's beautiful. And somehow, with the way he's looking down at me, I even believe I'm beautiful. He presses his mouth against my ear and whispers, no combination of written words could ever do this moment justice. I smile between moans. How are you going to write about it then? He kisses me softly right on the corner of my mouth. I guess I'll just have to fade to black. This might be my favorite book I've ever written in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> I really like it. Okay, now where are we? Well, she's fucking crying again. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
Then a tear slowly begins to take shape and rolls down her cheek. She shakes her head. Ben, you can't. Yes or no, Fallon. That's all I want to hear. She needs to go the next day, and he's like, give me your number. And she's like, no, I can't. Oh, my God. So during sex, she was like, I'll give you my number. Yeah. And now he's like, and now she's like, mm. <laughs> But she, she was like, oh, my brain wasn't in the right headspace. I was, <laughs> I was horny. I was horny. <laughs> horny brain. Sorry, I'm not going to give you my phone number. You need to be here for your family this year. You know that as well as I do, Ben. The last thing we need is a relationship over a cell phone. And that's exactly what will happen because we'll spend every spare second wanting to talk to each other instead of focusing on our goals. We'll alter everything just to be together. And it shouldn't be that way. Not yet. So at some point, it should you should be altering your goals and life choices yeah, based off of, yeah. yeah. We need to finish what we started. I let all that go in one ear and out the other because it isn't the answer I want. Honestly, men so true what's four plus four uh eight because she ate she served cunt <laughs> <laughs> yes or no she inhales a shaky breath and then in a weak effort sound sounding sincere she says no no ben go back inside and finish your book <gasps> wait what's five plus three Eight. Eight. She ate with that. Go back inside and finish your book. <laughs> Damn. Why was he like, you know what's a good idea? I'm going to I'm gonna fuck this girl two days after my brother died. Yeah, that's really <laughs> fucked up. In a house of mourning. I don't know. I just, maybe, I mean, everyone deals with grief in different ways. But, like, I just, like, she didn't even stay for the funeral. Like, didn't, yeah. like, support him in any other way. Yeah. Are they, like, friends, though? It's not just Ben. It's Ben and a baby. His nephew. I know this immediately because he has Ben's eyes. Kyle's eyes. All this is coming at me at once and I try to process each thing separately. First, the fact that Ben showed up and he's smiling at me and I stand up to hug him so that's enough to elicit a huge sigh of relief. Second, his arm is wrapped around this baby boy who's perched up on his lap, leaning his head against Ben's chest. Seeing him with his nephew like this assures me that both of us made the right choice last year, whether he agreed to it at the time or not. He's almost equal parts of Jordan and Kyle. Does she know Jordan or Kyle that she, well? She doesn't know Jordan very well. She met Jordan because Jordan walked in on them have, trying to have sex for I'm the first time. She barely knows. I know, and she's ben, like, and she's he like, has his eyes. Just like I know. That, that kid's just like her. I know. He's grinning shyly. I mean, I can see so much of Jordan in him. He's almost equal parts Jordan and Kyle. I wonder how that is for her to see so much of Kyle when she looks at her son. When Ben releases me from the hug, he smiles down at the little boy. Fallon, I'd like you to meet my nephew. Oliver. Ben really has his baby thing down. It's impressive and kind of sexy. Ben reaches his hand across the table and squeezes mine and his chest heats up from the small gesture. It's really good to see you, Fallon, he says, brushing his thumb over mine. Really good. The sincerity in his eyes makes me want to lunge across the table and kiss him right here. He doesn't hate me. He isn't mad at me. I feel like I just took my first breath of pure air in a year. This is always so weird, I say, seeing you for the first time in a year. I never know what to say or do. I'm lying. It's never been this weird before, but thanks to last year, it feels very awkward today. Can he say any words yet? Ben smiles at Oliver, brushing his hand over his tiny head. A couple, but I'm pretty sure he says them by accident, though. He mostly jokes gibberish. Ben laughs and says, He did say his first curse word, though. We keep his baby monitor on at night, and last week, clear as day, he said the word shit. Little guy is starting early. Everything hits me at once. Ben treats Oliver like a father would treat a son. Oliver looks at Ben like he's his dad. Ben referred to himself and Jordan as a we, and they keep Oliver's baby monitor on at night, which means they share a bedroom. I suck in a breath for a moment and feel my entire world turn on its axis. That's a lot of conclusions to jump to. Am I wrong? Period. I suck in a breath for a moment. My entire world turns on its axis. I grip the table when the clarity hits. I feel like such an idiot. Ben notices the change in demeanor immediately. And when my eyes lock with his, he begins to slowly shake his head, realizing his slip up. Fallon, he says quietly. But he adds no additional words to follow my, my name it's clear that i know and he does nothing to d dismiss my assumption instant jealousy building raging insane jealousy i'm forced to get up from my seat and rush to the bathroom because i refuse to let him see how much this completely destroyed me in a matter of seconds he calls after me but i don't pause i'm thankful he brought oliver with him because now he can't run after me it feels like my heart's literally breaking cracking right down the middle bleeding out of my chest <laughs> filling my lungs with blood and making it impossible to breathe holding the tears proves even more difficult when the door to the bathroom opens and shuts i look 
up to see Ben standing there holding Oliver, looking at me with a deep layer of regret. I close my eyes so I don't have to see his reflection in the mirror. I drop my head between my shoulders and just start crying. She's always fucking crying. She's always crying. I just don't understand. This is like, that's like a big conclusion to jump to. Read it. Read it. Read what? Read. The next thing? Yeah. This isn't how I meant for her to find out. I was going to tell her and soon, but I wanted to ease into it. Not that I expect her to be heartbroken over the fact that I'm dating Jordan. In fact, I thought the chances of her being happy for me were greater than the chances of her being upset by it. But it's obvious by the way she's reacting that she does care, that she did care. But for whatever reason, she refused to be with me when I needed her the most. I take a few hesitant steps forward until I'm right behind her and I gently grip her elbow with my hand, waiting for her to turn around. But she brushes my hand away and walks to the other side of the restroom. She grabs a paper towel and wipes at her eyes, her back still to me. I didn't mean for it to happen. The words fall out of my mouth as if they'll somehow comfort her. I want to take them back immediately. It doesn't matter that Fallon left such a big hole in my heart. I couldn't help it if someone else found their way into it. It doesn't matter that Jordan and I were both destroyed after the death of Kyle. It doesn't matter that things didn't progress between us until well after Oliver was born. It doesn't matter that I'll never feel the same connection with Jordan that I had when Fal with Fallon. But Oliver makes up for everything our relationship lacked. As much as she's hurting right now, she hurt me just as much, if not worse, when she chose New York over me. I look down at Oliver, his head resting against my chest, his eyes still closed. Fallon takes a deep breath and releases it before turning around. When she locks eyes with mine, it's evident just how much of her I destroyed. My knee-jerk reaction is to make it better, to tell her how I really feel, how since the moment I kissed Jordan for the first time, I've been nothing but a confused mess. Actually, I've been a confused mess since the second Fallon pulled away in that cab last year. Are you in love with her? She immediately covers her mouth with her hand, shaking her head in regret for asking the question. Please don't answer that. She walks towards me and drops her eyes to the floor. I need to leave, she says and passes me. I back up until I'm pressed against the door, holding it shut. Not like this. Please don't leave yet. Give me a chance to explain. I can't let her leave without her understanding the whole situation, but even more so, I'm hoping she'll explain what the hell happened last year and why she's acting like this news isn't actually affecting her like this. Explain what, she says quietly. Do you want me to stand here and listen to you explain how you didn't mean to fall in love with your dead brother's wife? Do you expect me to argue with you when you tell me it isn't just about what you want anymore, but about what's better for your nephew? Do you expect me to apologize for lying to you last year when I said I didn't want to love you? Each word of the last sentence to leave her mouth is like weighing, weights bearing down on me, sinking me to the bottom of a lake. She lied to me. I get it, Ben. It's my fault. I'm the one who walked away last year when you try to love me. She tries to reach around me for the door handle, but I move to block her. I pull her to the side, wrapping my free hand around the back of her head and pressing her face to my shoulder. I press my lips against the side of her head, trying not to be affected by the way she feels in my arms. She grips my shirt and I feel her begin to cry again. She's always crying. I know, every time. Every time. I follow her out of the bathroom and watch her as she grabs her purse from our booth and heads straight for the door. Oh, he didn't even take her purse. Wow. He leaves the booth and doesn't even take her purse so <laughs> someone could steal it. Okay. I head to the booth. Not only does he fuck his dead brother's wife, nice. but then he leaves Fallon's purse at the booth. Anyway, <laughs> I drop cash on the table and head outside. Okay, well, at least he doesn't dine and dash. She's yeah, next yeah. to the car, fumbling around in her purse. By the time she retrieves her keys, I'm standing next to her. I yank the keys out of her hands and walk towards my car, which is parked right next to hers. Ben, she yells, give me my keys. So he's fucking Literally. aggressive this was part of the deal wasn't it she wipes out her eyes almost angrily and then she continues we live our lives we date other people we fall in love with our dead brother's wives and in the end we see what happens well we've reached the end ben a little early but it's definitely the end i look past her too ashamed to make eye contact with her we still have two more years fallon we don't have to end it today she shakes her head i know i promise but I can't. There's no way in hell I'm putting myself through this again. You have no idea what this feels like. She says, holding her hand to her chest. Actually, Fallon, I know exactly what it feels like. <laughs> I peg her with my stare. Oh, Ooh. he pegs her. Did you know that's, like, common? That, like, when a sibling, like, dies, that a lot of times they will, like, date their sibling's partner? No. Well, now you know. That's weird. Because that's a thing, because I kept Googling it. To me? That's disgusting. And in every single Colleen Hoover book, there's so much incest in this. <laughs> and this in isn't the, the end. It's not the end in this book. There is incestual themes in every single one of her books. <laughs> but by like technicality, it's not technically incest. <laughs> in every fucking themes. book. There's an incestual trope. <laughs> I like it. It's funny. The, the baby was bad enough. But now that's his baby? How did we let this happen? I know as soon as the words leave my mouth that I'm being unfair to Jordan, but Jordan is also being unfair to me because she'll never love me like she loved Kyle. And she knows that. I'll never feel that. <laughs> <laughs> and she knows that I'll never feel about her the way I feel for Fallon. Fallon, did you move back to LA for me? 
for us. As soon as I ask a question, I can feel her deflate. Her lack of denial forces me to squeeze her tighter. Fallon, I whisper. God, Fallon. I lift her chin and force her to look up at me. Do you love me? You showed up in love with someone else. You shared another woman's bed. Your hands touched someone who isn't me. Your lips made promises against skin that isn't mine. Ugh. Nobody talks like this. No. Nobody fucking talks like this. It, I'm sorry. They're like at Applebee's in the parking <laughs> lot. Like, <laughs> we're like, what's going on over there? They're like, your your mouth, your lips made promises to someone else's skin. We're in another woman's yeah, bed. bed, and we're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only that was the end of the book. I know. If only, like, I, I wish it I were know. the fucking end of the book. That's ridiculous. The fifth November 9th. <laughs> My flaws are draped in. Sorry. I'm literally like swinging this mic, mic around the audio from it. It's literally going to be like, it's going to be like <laughs> the entire time. My flaws are draped in her mercy, revered by her false perception. And with her lips upon my skin, she will undress my deception. Oh my God, it's so deep. This is Fallon's perspective now. Previously, when I would think about events in my life, I would organize those events chronologically in my mind as before the fire and after the fire. I don't do that anymore. Not because I've grown as a person, quite the opposite actually, <laughs> because now I think about my life in terms of before Benton James Kessler and after Benton James Kessler. Pathetic, I know, but it's not so easy to rid my thoughts of someone who had such an impact on my life. That's the problem with Colleen Hoover books is that every single woman, every single main character, the only purpose that they serve is for them to base their whole life around the man oh, yeah. and that it's basically like everything else does not matter. Also, I know obviously I'm highlighting the most important parts. But we don't, I'm telling you right now, even if you were to read this book from front end, you wouldn't learn more about her. You wouldn't learn more about like, the type of person that she is. I mean, literally, it's all like talks this, about. Like, very two-dimensional. Right. Basically, fast forward to the next year. Um, oh, oh, they really skip a year. Yeah, they go, <gasps> they go to the next year. Alan is dating someone named Theodore, and Ben shows up at a bar or a club or wherever oh. they're at. He feels stronger, more defined, even more like a man this year. I'm stiff against him as I ask my next question. <laughs> Are you still with her? He looks crestfallen as he says, You know me better than that, Fallon. If I had a girlfriend, I certainly would be standing here trying to convince you to come home with me. Does she know him? No. <laughs> At, all. at one point in the book, they're like trying to think of how many hours they spent together, and they're like, in a total, we spent 23 hours together. Yeah. He's pressed against me, my thigh firm between both of his legs. It's obvious by the scorching hardness pressed against my thigh that the look in his eyes is genuine. Feeling him like this again, his mouth dangerously close to mine reminds me of the night I spent with him. The only night I've ever allowed a man to completely consume me. Heart, body, and soul. And the thought of what he was able to do to me that night almost forces me to <laughs> whimper. But I'm stronger than my hormones. I have to be. I shake my head back and forth with immense effort in order to ensure I don't accidentally nod. No, Ben, no. This past year has been the hardest year of my life. Oh, not the year that she got burned. I'm forced to bury my face against his shoulder and grip the back of his shirt just to keep myself upright. All he did was touch my ass, and I feel like I can't even stand upright anymore. I should be embarrassed. <laughs> hand oh god his fingers are slowly tracing up the front of my panties <laughs> i moan again twice <laughs> she's like she's like ah uh, ah uh. popcorn nicole no yeah you have to say that i'm not saying that you're gonna make me on my channel say, say that jesus fallon ben says stroke me breathing heavily against my mouth you're so wet like you just pissed <laughs> yourself <laughs> book so well <laughs> you want to know what's crazy about this whole scene in the 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 storage room mm. this is edited because this is a newer like edition of the mm. book printed it had to get edited because in this he sexually assaults her and she says stop and no and i don't want it and they because she got so much flack for it she had to cut this out so now she rewrote it so that it does so she's like so instead of me saying stop, I'm like, yeah, go for it. But before it literally was that. The fact that you have to edit your book you after it comes out. You know what? They should have edited it to be like 200 pages left. Yeah. I know. Oh, it's crazy that they didn't do that. Popcorn Jake. Wow. We're in Ben's perspective right now. Two years ago, <laughs> when I made love to you, I gave everything to you, heart and soul. But that night when you made the choice to go an entire year without seeing me again, I couldn't understand what had happened. I didn't understand how I could have felt what I felt. <laughs> you left and I was pissed. And I can't even tell you how hard these next few months were. I wasn't even grieving Kyle's death. I was grieving the loss of you. That's, That's really fucked up. <laughs> Fallon's perspective. On the top shelf next to the shoebox, 
is a thick stack of pages. It looks like a manuscript. Could it be? My curiosity is piqued. I stretch on my tiptoes until I can reach it, but I only pull off the top page just to see what it is. This is where I explain things to you because if I were to force you to even read this all, it's insane. Prologue, every life begins with a mother. Mine is no different. She was a writer, blah, blah, blah. Like it's, it's her going through this manuscript of him. I need you to follow this very closely. It's a manuscript of, of his little book that he was writing about the relationship, okay? Mm -hmm. And basically he writes everything in there and it's really bad. It's really, <laughs> for multiple reasons. Like really badly written? For the main reason, what, what do you think is in that manuscript? What, do, do you still think that he's gonna burn himself? What do you think is gonna happen now at the end? Like it just sounds like what are your predictions? Could, they're gonna be in love or something. They're gonna be in love. They're gonna end up together. No. But what's is that your prediction for the end of the book? That they end up together? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What if I told you <gasps> that he committed arson at her house and is the reason that she was burned? <laughs> You're lying. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. No. Yeah. Why would you give away? Wait. Is that not that, that happen? No, that's in the manuscript. That's in the manu- But I'm not gonna make you read all of that because that's like reading a whole other fucking book. His mother was dating her father, that asshole that he met in the beginning. Once again, incestual because that could have been his stepsister. Fallon could have been his stepsister. His beloved mother and Fallon's father were dating, but he just only knew of Fallon's father because he was like super famous and like, like a rich guy or whatever. She killed herself, okay? <laughs> Wait, uh, listen, that's not funny. she killed herself. He automatically assumed it's because that guy hurt my mother. So I'm going to get back at him. So that night, November 9, he went to her father's house. He had custody of her that night, which is very rare. Like he didn't ever have custody of her, but he had to have custody of her that night. And he decided to set his house on fire. I think he decided to set his car on fire, but then it got out of control and it set his house on fire. He's like watching the news when he gets home, like with his brother, because his brother knew about it. Uh -huh. Kyle, the dead one, he knew about oh wh what he did. Gosh. He knew that there was a victim in that house. He knows that he did that because there's a part in the book where like Kyle gripped him up and he's like, why the fuck would you bring her over here? Why would you bring her over here? Ben was watching the TV and saw that there was a victim from the fire and that it was her. And so he has been thinking about her that like every November 9th or whatever. And so he decided, I don't remember the exact reason why he went to the diner, but he wanted to see her. What? Yeah. Wait, that's like a really good plot line. Though. Yeah. Like, yeah, I understand. I wish the writing was I better. I know. I wish that they that did a know. better job of telling the story. He is the reason that she is burnt. And he purposely was at that diner that day because he knew that she was like with her, going to be with her dad. Or like either he was going to confront him or... Whatever the point was, he had full intentions of being at that diner that day on November 9th. Oh, God. He can... He, he like... He masterminded yes. the whole thing. Yeah. And then he got into a relationship with her and was like, I'm going to write a whole book about this. And she wasn't supposed to read that all because that makes him look evil. Yeah. So she completely exiles him. I'll save you the trouble because we're going to get through it. He thought that his mother killed him herself with a fucking gun because, oh, her boyfriend obviously had to have hurt her. And it was like a new boyfriend. Like they were only in a relationship for like a very like short amount of time. The reason she killed herself because he never read the suicide note. He just made the assumption. He never read the suicide note. She killed herself because she had cancer and she was gonna die soon and oh, didn't want to go through the treatment. My God. So he committed arson for no goddamn reason to this guy who did not deserve it and for no reason. Oh my God. And All of this is in this, the rest of this book? Yes, night? yes. And no, it's, it's like in a shorter amount. He's wondering how I found it. He's wondering how much I've read Ben the writer. I want to laugh because Benton James Kessler isn't a writer. He's an actor, a master of deception who's just completed a four year long performance. For the first time, it really wasn't a four year long performance. So it was like no. a, it was like a 23 hour performance yeah. or so. For the first time, I don't see him as the Ben I fell in love with, the Ben who single-handedly changed my life. He literally did single-handedly change yeah. her life though. Right now, I see him only as a stranger, someone I know absolutely nothing about. To be fair, she literally never knew anything about him. Yeah. I have no idea what he's capable of. He begins to advance toward me. So, so I 
do the only thing I can think to do. I run to the other side of the table, hoping to put safe distance between myself and this man. Hurt washes over his face when he sees my reaction, but I have no idea if it's genuine or rehearsed. I have no idea if I should believe everything I just read or if he made it all up for the sake of having a plot line. This is wild. Do this is a good one. Do you find it even more creepier now how he's so obsessed with her scars? Yeah. My mother is sitting on the couch. Shit, I forgot she was bringing me breakfast. Now she'll think I do nothing but sleep every day, all day. Hey, I say to her as I walk in my bedroom. She glances up. I'm immediately confused by her, her expression. She's crying. My first thought is, what happened and who did this? Who did it happen to? My father, my grandmother, cousins, aunts, uncles, bottle, my... Who's bottle? Bottle, my mom's dog? <laughs> that answered my question. <laughs> who the fuck is wow. bottle? <laughs> who names their dog bottle? That's a weird name. What's wrong, I ask her. But then I look down at her lap and realize that everything is wrong. She's reading the manuscript, Ben's manuscript, our story. Since when did she start invading privacy? I notice, I point at it, and I shoot her an unoffended look. What are you doing? She picks up a discarded tissue and wipes her eyes. I'm sorry, she says, sniffling. I saw the letter, and I would never read your personal things, but it was open this morning when I brought breakfast, and I'm sorry. But then she picks up some of the pages of the manuscript and flops them back and forth. I read the first page, and I've been sitting here for four hours now, and I haven't been able to stop. Wow. She's been reading it for four hours. She literally read their, like, sex... Yeah, their sex, weird. their sex capades. Literally us right now, though. Truly. Fallon, don't you dare throw that away, she says. She grabs the box from my hands and hugs it to her chest. Why would you do that? She sets the box on the counter, smoothing her hand over the top like it's a prized possession. I almost just broke. I'm confused why she's reacting this way to something that should infuriate her. She releases a quick breath, and then she looks firmly in the eye. Sweetie, is any of this true? Did these things really happen? I don't even know what to tell her, because I have no idea which thing she's referring to. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. I pass her and walk towards the couch. But if you're referring to Benton James Kessler and the fact that he's allowed me to completely fall in love with a fictitious version of himself, then yes, that happened. I left one of the couch cushions in search of my remote control. And if you're referring to the fact that I found out he was somehow responsible for a fire that almost killed me, but failed to point out that minor detail that I was falling in love with him, then yes, that happened too. You haven't read any of this, have you? She said, placing the box on the coffee table in front of us. I read the prologue last year. That was enough for me. I feel the warmth of her hand encase mine. I slowly turn my head to find that she's looking at me with an endearing smile. Sweetheart. My head falls against the back of the couch. Can your advice please wait until tomorrow? She sighs. Fallon, look at me. Did you love him? She asks. I don't do anything for a few seconds. My throat feels like it's burning, so rather than yes, I just nod. Her mouth twitches and she blinks fast, twice, like she's trying not to cry. She's still brushing her thumb across my cheek. Her eyes deviate from mine and then she scrolls over the scars on my face and neck. I'm not going to pretend that I know what you've gone through, but after reading those pages, I can assure you that you aren't the only one who is scarred in that fire. Just because he chose not to show you his scars doesn't mean they don't Ew. exist. What the heck? She picks up the box and sets it on my lap. Here they are. He's put his scars on full display for you, and you need to show him the respect he showed you by not turning them away from him. Her mom is literally like a, a Ben apologist. This whole chapter one thing is about the suicide of his mother. And that's why he did it. Uh, so basically, in the, the 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 manuscript that she read, it was like, yeah, I caused the fire that burned Fallon. But she didn't know why. And this is the part of the thing where she's like, oh my god, he has scars too. Still 11.56 p.m. when I clasp my hands behind my head and suck in a rush of cool November air just to see if my lungs are working. She, she glances down at her phone in her hands, and then she looks back up at me. It's 11.57, Ben. We only have three minutes to do this. Mm. I stare at her, wondering what she means by that. Is she leaving in three minutes? Is she only giving me three minutes to plead my case with her? Questions are bouncing around in my head when I see the corner of her mouth lift into a smile. She's smiling. And when I feel her arms go around me, I do the most non-alpha thing uh. I can possibly do. I cry like a fucking baby. I just want to say, like, I hate how much Colleen Hoover talks about alpha males in this. This, it's far too much this like tender very quotation marks tender moment because obviously it's so fucked up tender moment is literally ruined because as if it couldn't as if it couldn't get any worse she's talking about fucking alpha males anyway ben i have something i want to say i pull back and look down at her now there are tears in her eyes so i don't feel so pathetic she reaches up and puts her hands on my face gently stroking my cheek i didn't come here to forgive you <gasps> you were 16 she says you had been through one of the worst things a child could ever experience. Your actions from that night weren't because you were a bad person, Ben. It was because you were scared. You were a scared teenage boy. And sometimes people make mistakes. You carried so much guilt for what you did and for so long. You can't ask my forgiveness because there's nothing to forgive. If anything, I'm here for your forgiveness. Because I know your heart, Ben. And your heart is only capable of love. 
and I should have recognized this last year when I doubted you. I should have given you the chance to explain it then. If I had just listened to you, then we could have avoided an entire year of heartache. So for that, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And I hope you can forgive me. What the fuck? What the fuck? That is really fucked up. Why did she do that? Oh, I'm angry. That's... Oh, this is the last, like, three sentences of the book. I grinned as I lowered my mouth to hers. Spoiler alert. <laughs> they lived happily ever after. And then I kiss her. And it's a 12. Not the end. Far from it. I'm happy I didn't put that much time into this book. I finished it in the night. The twist is good. The twist is good. No wonder it's 20% off. Save another 5% <laughs> with your Target red card. That's really massively stupid. That yeah, I hate it. I hated that. It's insane. I liked the idea of this book when I first read it because I was like, oh yeah, that plot twist is insane. But then when I started to read more books that actually have good writing and don't portray women as surrounding their whole lives around men. Yeah. And like also like, oh, my whole entire existence is basically relevant whether this man is nice to me or not or whether he is in love with me or not. Also, the incestual themes had like a relationship with dead brothers, brother's girlfriend, which didn't have to happen. Like that plot thing that also wasn't his necessary. mom's ex's ex daughter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, who could have been a stepsister. Yeah, that's really weird. This didn't have to happen. Colleen, Colleen, Colleen Hoover, 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 Fallon, Fallon, Benton, Benton. Benton. <laughs> the name Ben normal. Benton. Benton, however, why? Glenn was spelled with two, with two N's. N's. The dog's name was Bottle. What was the friend's name? Amber. That's normal. That's normal. Do you guys want to know what time it is right now? <laughs> Do you know it's what time we started? We started at 9.30. I'm so sorry. It's fine. <gasps> Four hours? Yeah, good luck. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> that was good.